The following question is that at 450 kelvins, uh, PCl5 decomposes to form PCl3 and chlorine. A dynamic equilibrium is established as, established as shown. So you have this reaction happening where PCl5 is changing into PCl3, Cl2 and vice versa. So it's going in forward and backward direction at the same rate. Now the enthalpy change for formation of PCl3 under these conditions is given. So you are given the enthalpy of formation of PCl3. Calculate the enthalpy change of formation of PCl5 under these conditions. Include a sign with your answer. Now one method of calculating the enthalpy of a reaction of this particular reaction. Remember we already have the answer. The enthalpy change for this reaction is already calculated. But one way of calculating the enthalpy of this reaction is using Hess law is that if you are given the enthalpy of formation of the products as well as the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. So you can use a simple formula which is that the enthalpy of this reaction could be calculated by summing up the enthalpy of formation of products and subtracting the enthalpy of formation of my reactants. So if the enthalpy of formation of everything is given, all the products and all the reactants are given, I can calculate the enthalpy change for that particular reaction using this formula and this is precisely what I am going to do. What I am going to do is uh, uh, I have enthalpy of PCl3 is already provided. It's given as uh, minus 320. So the enthalpy change which is already known it's uh, 124. I have the answer it's plus 124. So you, I'm going to uh, sum up the enthalpy of formation of my products which in this case are PCl3 which is minus 320 plus the enthalpy of formation of Cl2. Uh, remember Cl2 the enthalpy of formation of elements is always zero because uh, you don't need to form elements. Uh, elements are already in their formed state so you don't need to do anything. So enthalpy of formation of elements is zero. So this, these two are my products. So this is my products or the sum of my products. And I'm going to subtract my reactant, enthalpy of formation of my reactant, which is supposed to be calculated. We had to calculate the enthalpy change of formation of PCl5. We don't have this value. So I'm going to take this as, uh, as the unknown, the enthalpy of formation of PCl5. And I don't have a value for that. So this is my reactant. So it's going to be product minus reactants, the enthalpy of formation of my products minus the enthalpy of formation of my reactants. And I already know the enthalpy change which should be which should come out to be equal to 124. Now uh, rearranging everything, uh, I'm supposed to find the enthalpy of formation of PCl5. So let's uh, rearrange everything PCl5, enthalpy of formation of uh, PCl5 would then be equal to uh, it's going to be equal to minus 320 and uh, if I take 124 to the other side it's going to become uh, equal to minus uh, 124 and my answer is going to be so the answer is minus uh, 444 kilojoules per mole let's move to the next part of the question the next part of the question now states uh, B part 1, state and explain the effect of increasing temperature on the rate of decomposition of PCl5. So uh, we need to explain uh, uh, the rate of increasing temperature. Remember whenever you increase temperature, this question is not about uh, anything else, not about equilibrium, it's about the rate of the reaction. So a lot of people confuse this with equilibrium and with many other things. So it's a simple statement, if you increase temperature, what happens to the speed of the reaction? So the answer is that uh, when you have a higher temperature, higher temperature increases kinetic energy. So if it increases kinetic energy, particles are going to travel at a faster speed. So they, they're going to have more frequent collisions. The amount of uh, or the frequency of collisions would increase. You'll have more particles bumping into each other. Plus the percentage of effective collisions also increases. Uh, the collisions are going to be more forceful and there are more chances of a successful reaction happening. So higher temperature increases kinetic energy and you get more frequent and more effective collisions. Now moving to the next part of the question, uh, the question now states, state and explain the effect of increasing temperature on the percentage of PCl5 that decomposes. Now this part is your increasing temperature and the question now specifically is talking about the equilibrium. Uh, remember increasing temperature always favors, uh, it favors the endothermic reaction so the endothermic reaction is supposed to be favored if you increase temperature 
Now let's go above and have a look at the reaction. You will notice that this reaction over here, uh, the value that's given is uh, the enthalpy change for this particular reaction is given as plus 124. That's endothermic, which means that the forward reaction, uh, the reaction is endothermic in the forward direction. The enthalpy change is always given for the forward reaction. So the forward reaction is endothermic. And we have already stated that whenever you increase temperature according to Lee Shatler's principle, it's the endothermic reaction which is going to be favored. Hence, uh, in this particular case, forward reaction would be favored. So forward reaction is, is going to be favored. And we need to um, uh, talk about or comment on the percentage of PCL5. So if you go back and have a look, if the forward reaction is favored, then more PCL5 will decompose. So the amount of PCL5 at equilibrium would decrease. So the percentage would be lesser. Uh, so PCL5 decomposes and the percentage of PCL5 at equilibrium would be lesser as more forward reaction takes place. Moving to the next part of the question, now you are being asked, explain the meaning of the term dynamic equilibrium and the conditions necessary for it to become established. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the definition of dynamic equilibrium which is that the rate of forward reaction equals the rate of backward uh, reaction. So, for example, if you have an equilibrium reaction, uh, the rate at which the products are being formed and the rate at which the reactants are formed back again, both rates would be equal. The quantities of all the reactants and products could be different. They could be the same. But the, the condition is that the rate of forward uh, reaction equals the rate of a backward reaction. So, let's write that down. So, here it's written when the rate of forward reaction equals the rate of backward reaction. And the other thing that should be uh, noted is uh, the conditions necessary for it to become established. Uh, the container must be sealed or closed or you must ensure that there are no changes in conditions of pressure, concentration or any other changes th that should be introduced to the system. The container must be, it's, it's supposed to be a closed system. Part D now reads that when two moles of PCL5 are decomposed at 450 Kelvins, and 1 into 10 per 5 pascals, the resulting equilibrium mixture contains 0.8 moles of chlorine. So we need to calculate the partial pressure of uh, PCL5 in this equilibrium mixture. So I've drawn a table and this was the equilibrium reaction where PCL5 was decomposing to form PCL3 and Cl2. And this reaction is at equilibrium. The forward reaction and the backward reaction are happening. So I'm going to first find out the initial moles, uh, the moles that were begin in the beginning added to the container. So you notice when two moles of PCL5 are decomposed, your initial moles for PCL5 uh, are 2.00 moles of PCL5. Uh, the moles of PCL3 are 0 moles and the moles of Cl2 are also uh, exactly 0 moles. So initially there is no, uh, there's only PCL5. And then it decomposes and uh, the resulting equilibrium mixture, so let's uh, write down the moles at equilibrium. Uh, at equilibrium, the moles, uh, the equilibrium moles, that are given or provided. The equilibrium moles are provided for Cl2. It's given that it's uh, 0 0.800 moles of Cl2 that are present at equilibrium. Now, if you look at this table, initially there was no chlorine and now 0.8 moles of chlorine are present. That means 0.8 moles of chlorine have been formed. So if 0 0.8 moles of chlorine have been formed, uh, PCL5 was decomposing it was going to produce PCL3 and Cl2. So Cl2 would not be formed in isolation if uh, the moles of PCL3 and Cl2 would be exactly the same. So if 0.8 moles of Cl2 are formed, then according to the ratio, it's 1 ratio 1. The amount of Cl3, PCL3 that's going to be formed would be exactly the same as well. So 0 0.8 moles of uh, PCL3 would also be, they would also be formed. And if one PCL3 is formed according to the ratio, one PCL5 would get used up. So if 0.8 moles and 0.8 moles of uh, both of these uh, products are formed, that means 0.8 moles of PCL5 must have reacted. So 0 0.8 moles must have reacted. So initially you had two moles and uh, we figured out that 0.8 moles of PCL5 have reacted. That would leave us with... 2 moles initially, 0.8 reacted, so that leaves us with 1.20 moles of PCL5 at equilibrium. And similarly, initially you had 0 moles of PCL3, 0.8 moles got formed, so at the end it's going to be 0 
moles. So I found the equilibrium moles of all the three substances. It's 1.2 moles, 0.8 moles of uh, PCl3 and 0.8 moles of Cl2. So let's put this to the side for a while. We now have to find the partial pressure of PCl5. How do you find PCl5 partial pressure? Uh, the formula is you first have to find the percentage mole or mole fraction and multiply it by the total pressure which is uh, which over here is given it's 1 into 10 to the power 5 so uh, we need to multiply it by the total pressure so what's the mole fraction remember all of these moles combined especially the ones uh, at equilibrium all these moles these are the moles that are that are present at equilibrium so so all these moles, all of these gases combined are exerting a pressure of 1 into 10 to the power 5. So what is the com contribution of PCL5? So out of all these moles, uh, PCL5 is 1.2 moles. So I'm going to add them up. It's 1.2 moles. The mole fraction is 1.2 moles out of the total moles, which over here is going to be uh, 1.2 plus 0.8. That's 2. 2 plus 0.8 again. That's 2.8. So it's going to be 1.2 divided by... 2.80 and I'm going to multiply it by the total pressure which in this case is 1 into 10 raised per 5 and the answer that I'm going to get is on my calculator it's coming out to be 4.29 times 10 to the power 4 pascals so that's the answer that I am getting on my calculator let's move to the next part of the question where uh, we now have to write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kp for the decomposition of PCl5. So if you look at the equation, uh, it's products, the partial pressures of the products divided by the partial pressure of my reactant. So I'm going to do just that. Uh, my products are P partial pressure of PCl3 uh, multiplied by the partial pressure of chlorine. Those are my products divided by my reactants, which in this case are partial pressure of PCL5. In the next part, uh, what is given now is that the partial pressure of PCL3 and Cl2 in this equilibrium mixture are both 2.86 into 10 to the power 4 pascals. We now need to calculate the value of Kp and state its unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute these values over here. Uh, these values are given uh, for PCL3 and PCL2. Both of them are given. So let's... Uh, do a working over here it's going to be it's going to be 2.86 into 10 is power 4 multiplied by 2.86 times 10 to the power 4 again because uh, he has clearly stated that both pcl3 and cl2 in this equilibrium mixture are both 2.86 into 10 is power 4 and uh, i'm going to divide it by the partial pressure of pcl5 which i've already calculated just above it's uh, it has been calculated as 4. Point 2, 9 times 10 to the power 4. And if you try and solve this, uh, the value that I'll be getting is 1.91 into uh, 10 to the power 4. So this was would be the answer to this part, calculate the value of Kp. So we have, uh, we have precisely done just that. And we also need to find the unit. So you can uh, figure out the unit by looking at uh, the expression um, this is pressure multiplied by pressure divided by pressure so two of the terms uh, if i try and calculate the unit uh, it's going to be pascals multiplied by pascals divided by pascals and the pascal term would cancel out and my unit for kp would be just pascals so it's going to be just Pascal. So it's, it's going to be 1.94 times 10 to the power of 4 Pascals.